Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a Premier League presentation bringing you guys a game between Mouthsports and the Q-Pad Red Pandas. This is going to be a final best of one game to conclude our Demon Cup. Uh, this was the first cup brought to you from the Premier League Season 5 and it has been decided the points values that of course for our previous match we saw Evil Genius take the first place prize and along with that Virtus Pro taking the second. So this is now here the third and fourth decider to decide from the low, kind of loser's bracket I guess you could say these two teams uh, what they're going to take away from it as far as point values long term to get into the Premier Cup to get the chance at the cash prize and uh, under two months now so not too long of a season not uh, drawn out as much as the previous one and I think that's a really good thing to get some more awesome condensed Dota action with every game mattering more and more as we go along right now though Mouse Sports Q -Pand, they've been waiting a little bit but finally raring to go as they start off the draft here I myself am Blaze here with Triumphal Man how's it going? It's pretty good. Uh, Mouse Sports actually opening up with a life still a bit interesting. They do have first pick and they have been favoring the life stealer slash Bane pick and of course going for the high mobility heroes to go with the life stealer. So they might actually still pick up the Bane here. Also should mention that first place is 100 points, second place 50 points and now uh, Mouse Sports and Q-Pad are playing off of, uh, for 30 and 18 points respectively for third and fourth. So we'll see who can walk away on top. And for people who are freaking out thinking this is going to decide who walks away with a couple of grand, no, this just decides points. And points are what will matter to get you into the games that will actually matter for money. So, first pick here from Nature's uh, from our Sports, and they open up with the Nature's Profit. Okay then, so again, they've got that mobility hero, but I think oh, I think we may actually see a similar game. Nature's Profit, of course, very good for the whole uh, mobility and just essentially death by a thousand cuts. Every time you try and engage in a fight, even if you think like you're winning, Nature's Prophet is just busy chewing away at another tower somewhere else on the map. So it's a very frustrating type of hero to play against. And I'll see what uh, Q-Pad have in mind. I mean, if you pick up something like a Batrider, it's a very good way to shut him down, or a Storm's Brew. Very good heroes to try and shut down Nature's Prophet's shenanigans. Yeah, a lot of different potential to counteract it, but interesting to see it as a first pick here, of course, adding potential to gank up early, get a numbers advantage for heroes, and then also have that annoying push potential that we saw last game. Uh, most likely Koikova going to be the one to pick it up here, has the most potential with it and, and most experience with it beyond Paz, who used to be their offlane player before finding himself in the supportive role of late. Either way, they do have one standing here, Ats will be standing in for... just blanked on it for some reason there, but they, he is standing in for Cinderin, and uh, then along with that we do have Dexter on the keypad Red Pandas and he will be standing in for Select. So interesting, a slight shift of roster, neither team playing at full strength, but still I have their core lineup here and we'll see exactly how it plays on out. Uh, Shadow Demon selected um, to deal with this Clockwork and Nyx Assassin, which I think is a very very strong early draft coming out of the keypad Red Pandas. Uh, whether they run the offline clockwork or run them in kind of the, like a mid roll. They're definitely not going to be able to do two supportive melee heroes, but uh, in general, the clockwork will still add some dynamic potential that will allow them to initiate more actively, increase their range of initiation, and uh, most importantly, get the pickoffs on Nature's Prophet when he tries to TP. It's kind of a fish in a barrel situation where you see the sprout, you have a bullseye on his back, and you just jump on in with a long range clockwork hook to bring him down. So, very, very frustrating for Prophet to try to survive up against, and we'll see how great effect it is used to in. Uh, this solo ex exceptional role. Mm, indeed, we will. Shadow Demon, though, picked up by Mouse Sports, and it looks like Mouse Sports are going to spend <clears throat> most of their time here, and it will be a Gyro Cup. So I think we'll see a fairly safe lane from Mouse Sports. This is going to try and get this Gyro farm. They're not really going to be super aggressive, but of course, Shadow Demon, really good defensively. The Shadow, um, the disruption, very, very useful for saving people in a bad situation. I am also expecting the Clockwork to be taking that solo mid. Nyx Assassin probably taking his support role more than anything else. And the question is, what are Cuba going to spend their final pick on here before we go into the second banning phase? I think we're probably going to tr see them try and secure probably one of their primary farmers here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in this position, it's going to be a little bit different. So the gyrocopter is going to be able to dish out a lot of damage, as we saw last game, but right now they're looking for a setup potential. They don't really have, like, a Darkseer vacuum or the uh, Magnus reverse polarity. So in this mindset here, with those most likely to be banned out very shortly, uh, the, the Q-Pad Red Pandas have a little bit more control of how effective the gyrocopter really turns out to be. Of course, he's still very flexible. He'll find his farm. He'll deal his damage. Uh, but to what effect is the question here? And if they can get some early pressure off with the Weaver pick and just start starting some aggression, moving on through Shikuchi actively, uh, that kind of thing, they can actually harass down the Gyrocopter to a point that he can be screwed over very early on in fights. And a Gyrocopter that is sitting at below half HP and dropping quickly is not one to stand and deliver six full auto attacks from Flak Cannon. He's going to be the one to fall back and hopefully survive through abilities like Shadow Demon's Defense and Disruption and such. But when you're playing on the back foot there, it's hard for a hero like that to come back until he gets some good lifesteal anyways to go along with his high damage output. 
and we'll see what Mouse decide to round this out with. Too bad though, they have got some good gankers here, and this is fairly common for them. They like to pick some kind of gank oriented thing where they've got a, they can put a lot of pressure on the map, and putting pressure on the map is definitely going to help them out. Not only will it help keep Nature's Prophet under control, but keeping like making it hard for him to teleport around and just push towers at a whim. And it's also going to help them keep a Gyrocopter under control there while Weaver gets up to speed. And you say well, he could definitely, it's a possibility that he takes the offensive role, but we'll see what they've got in mind. I mean, if they really wanted to, they could even do something crazy like put Nick's Assassin in a tri lane with something with two other heroes, put Clockwork in the safe lane, or even in the mid, put Weaver in the safe lane, just have him farm. So we'll see what they have in mind. I mean, right now it's still fairly flexible. All these heroes are still fairly flexible. They can play all sorts of different roles. So Cupad definitely aren't locked into any particular lineup just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly that. The big thing about Cupad's lineup right now is how flexible it can be. Uh, the only thing I think is certain is Nick's being supportive. Uh, because they do have the clockwork and he is going to be running a solo lane, they, they don't want to really necessarily run the Nick's as a mid. But even that is not 100% guaranteed. Either way, right now, they have so many different ways they can run it. They can run offlane Weaver, they can run offlane Clockwork, they can run supportive Nyx, they can run mid Nyx, they can run tri lane Weaver. I mean, really, there is no way for Mouseports to be able to break the lanes. That's what makes it so hard to ban against. Is like, okay, well, they have two heroes that could be a support. All we're going to try to do is make sure that they don't get the range hero to supplement them and go alongside them. So they'll do that, and that'll work out pretty well. But from there, what are the lane breakdown? You just don't know what to expect in this situation. Now, Although they can play defensively with the Shadow Demon Gyrocopter, you're not sure if the Prophet's going to get delaned out of bottom. You're not sure if you're going to be able to actually run a, a greedy solo that could be picked off in the mid. So there's going to be a lot of potential for Q-Pad to shuffle things up a little bit and uh, catch Mouseports unawares. I like the Puck ban there. Puck, of course, Fatter plays a very, very mean Puck. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that Green Core re rolls really well with the cooldown just allows you to basically lock people in an area and just allow Jar to bomb them and force them to a rock and high place. Either they push themselves to the limit of their Dream Core and risk snapping, or they get slammed by a cooldown. They never really know where it's going to land either, so it causes a lot of confusion. Kanka, though, being picked up by Mouse Sports. This is definitely very interesting. I think we might even see Kanka take the mid. What do you reckon, Blaze? Um, it's definitely possible. Early on in Q Panda's uh, attempts to draft things up and change things up a little bit, we saw Sig Sing pick up Kunkka many times over in the mid lane, and uh, better against some heroes than others. But the, the big thing is he got some easy early farm when he's up against a melee hero like Nyx or Clockwork, which is what to, is to be expected here. So a lot of potential there. But I feel that if they don't at least roam the Shadow Demon mid multiple times over, you're missing out on some great synergy there because the disruption into Torrent is one of the best combos in the game. And uh, just setting it up there, that amount of damage and disable combo together, I, I really think that any time Shadow Demon and Kunkka are nearby, there's going to be a lot of potential to bring somebody down in a matter of seconds. I mean, it, not just by themselves, but if you get a third involved especially, because Nature Prophet can teleport wherever you want for some extra right-click damage. So, I really, really think that Mouse Sports has practiced that lineup well enough, that that could be really, really high presence, but I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out for them. Q-Pad have run it themselves, and now Mouseports answering back with that as a rather unorthodox pick here. I like it. I like it a lot. And of course, like you say, there's a lot of setup potential there. Still, Mouseports probably looking for one final support here, so we'll see what they decide to roll with. And, I mean, they've got the option. They could even go for some kind of melee hero if they really Ooh. want to. Skyrath going to be picked up by Q-Pad. Interesting. So I think we might actually... I think Skyrath is probably going to be a support role here, because like you said, I, I think it's doubtful that they run Clockwork as well as Nyx together in the same lane as support heroes, because just because the dual melee there is fairely difficult to work with. And there we go, Mouse Sports do, wind, oh, do round out their lineup there with a nice melee stun from Sankey. Of course, plenty of teamfight potential. So we've got the cooldown, we've got the boat, we've got the epicenter. This can cause a lot of havoc, especially for a squishy hero like Weaver. If he gets locked down in the middle of that, he's going to fall apart very, very quickly. So I'm a little bit worried there for Cupad. A lot of teamfight potential for Mouse Sports, Blaze. Yeah. In this stage right now, I honestly, I, I see the heroes on the board, and I think, why in the world would you pick up Skywrath? I mean, there's so much potential to lo lock him down. I was just talking about the disruption into Torrent. The Gyrocopter closing the distance can bring him down in seconds, and Sand King locking him down. I mean, that's just very, very threatening. So I understand Skywrath is a hero. It's high potential in a lot of circumstances, but this just doesn't seem to be one of them. What they're relying on here is getting Cog and Mystic Flare combos. And as a support of Skywrath, you're not always going to be 
able to expect that kind of situation. So I expect Nyx, Skywrath, and Weaver to go maybe an aggressive tri lane. Sing Sing will go solo safe lane, and Dexter will run the clock on the mid. I mean, that definitely would work for their lanes, but I just don't see why Skywrath is superior to other supports with more disabled potential, because you're not really getting that much out of the silence, as far as I can tell anyways. There's some traction, but not game-breaking. I know, they might have some greedy lineup being played here. We'll see what's happening in a second. Wagamama, though, has picked up the Weaver, so this may actually be an off-lane Weaver, potentially. Wagamama has a habit of playing, but that's it. They are playing with a stand-in, so they might be shuffling things around a little bit. So we'll see what they have in mind in just a moment. And uh, Sing Sing also rotates. Sing Sing is, generally speaking, Cupad's uh, carry player, the primary farmer carry player at the moment. He's picked up the oh, Magnus. So I think, actually, I think they're probably uh, shuffling the deck chairs a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we'll see what they have in mind. Yeah, most definitely. It's it's definitely a weird lineup here. We'll see exactly how it plays on out. But we have seen Sing Sing play Magnus a couple times before, and uh, he does have a lot of potential on that hero. It's just not his standard role. Going to be going. It looks like actually on the mid lane based on his uh, early Tango branch combo, but uh, that's it's still possible they could be taking that safe lane. Either way, right now Jerex is heading down bottom, picking up supportive items, and yeah, Jerex will be playing up that support of Skywrath. I just again I don't see as much impact. Maybe they'll show me very directly how this thing is supposed to work, because for right now, it seems a little wonky, but they're, they're one way or another, Mouse Sports is going to be trying to survive through the laning phase. Once they get to mid to late game, they're going to be in a great position. They have a dual core with Kunkka and Gyrocopter, and most likely the Nature Prophet will be able to make a huge impact as well. Koikwa going to start off in the jungle, seeing as he's picked up a couple of clarities here, and yeah, he's just making it so that he will be in a position to go for an early Midas and make himself a player on the field very early on with some hard right click or some utility like mechanism. Either way, they're going to make it so that their Nature's Prophet, Kunkka, and Gyrocopter all are very relevant. And for that matter, q -Pand has a lot of pressure put on Sing Sing to make sure that he controls the team fights because otherwise, Mouseworth certainly has the control to th throw it right back in the other direction. I think they can probably manage it. I mean, they probably get, Clockwork is going to take this top lane. He's going to struggle a little bit just because there's a lot of nasty spells up there that can set him up for uh, death, doom, and destruction. But at the same time, of course, he can Dexter here can open up, just cause a mess with a hook with the cogs, get the fight rolling, and then Sing Sing can come in and then clean or just basically continue to set up the fight with the reverse polarity and get things set up for the Mystic Flare. And I think... I, I think it should be okay. The fact, like, Skyrath Mage, like you said, he's not the best support. And like you said, he's probably relying on getting down a good Mystic Flare as the main part of I mean, it in combination with either the Cogs or with the Reverse Polarity. But I think it's doable because they can really hold him back as sort of the, like the final lie, like the final bit, bit of uh, power that they try to swing into the fight because you've got three, like two or three heroes that can go in ahead of him, set the fight, get it ready, and wait for Mouse Sports to blow most of their firepower on top of that, so we'll see if they can manage that though. But like you said, he's definitely an odd choice considering he doesn't have any of those really good strong hard disables. Yeah, and so, I mean, it'll it'll make its wealth known. I haven't seen enough Skyrath games to make a very good criti critique of it. It just, in this situation, seems like there's too much right-click on the board to make it relevant. Right now, we do see Jarek's moving in mid, though. He's going to actually harass back Kunkka with some Arcane Bolt, some right-clicks, and uh, although have to eat up a couple Tangos, he, he's pretty much just making it, it's making it so that he won't be able to farm on the lane directly. He's giving Sing Sing free farm, moving in towards his bottle, later towards Arcane's and Blink. And uh, for right now, Fata doesn't want to be pressured this hard. He generally is one player to control the mid extremely well, no matter what hero he has. And in this situation, it's a 1v1 with a Kunkka. You're going to be very, very happy about that situation, but Jarek's making him a little bit less comfortable. Mm, this is I mean, this is, we don't see that often anymore, the dual mid. I, I kind of feel sad that we don't see it all that often just because it is a great way to shut down certain heroes or even just ensure that you get farm on certain heroes. But I don't think Jarex is going to stay here. He's probably going to break off shortly once Sing Sing gets a little bit of an advantage over Fatter, and he was probably just going to break off and I think try... Well, then again, there's not much he can do because obviously they've abandoned the Fury... Oh, Fury has abandoned the bottom lane, so I mean, he doesn't really have much else to so maybe go and stack a bit and uh, Sing Sing can clean up with Shockwaves and uh, empower a little bit later and they share the experience in gold bounty but it looks like uh, it looks like Atsy has decided to come down to this mid lane and try to help out because obviously there's not really getting a whole lot done by himself so we see him just going to spam out some more of those arcane bolts there oh okay. he's back not going too well oh he's blocked in he's stuck Wow, that's a really rough position to be in. That disruption came on out, and they blocked out Jarex. That's able to get a solo kill first blood. Meanwhile, on top, Dexter going to get dropped down to black. Uh, he tried to trap him inside the cogs, but a little bit too much damage coming in with the burrow strike connecting after the cogs expired. So, wow, kills everywhere all at once. Mini able to actually clean up on the Shadow Demon while he went on the run. Uh, went so close to his base, but uh, closing the distance, Nyx's Assassin was able to finish him off there. 
I am very surprised that uh, Clockwork would even try and attempt to shut down Gargoyle just because there's so much damage you can get blitz by when it comes to those really, really nasty rocket barrage. And of course, you throw on the fact that it's a stun waiting to catch him. I mean, he knows that Sankey must be hopping around here somewhere, and he's giving him a fairly early kill at mid, though. They pick up their gank. Man, this is going to be one of those games, man. I'm, like, trying to catch up, but they keep on being one step ahead of me. Kills everywhere right now. So much potential to bring people down early, and that's just, yeah, a good usage of... Uh, actually, it wasn't Skier, because that's been on cooldown for quite some time, but they were able to bring down the Konka with just some long-range harassment. Dropping down Arcane Bolt Concussive and a Shockwave simultaneously is enough damage to bring him down. Does force Sing Sing to go for back to the base to heal on up, but he's happy to do it to pick up that kill. I mean, he's already got boots and bottles, so that should be fairly okay for them. As it looks like Channel Demon, though, has picked up some sentry wards. He's going to try and get some map control here. This will help shut down the roaming a little bit if he can manage to figure out where to put them. Or he might even be holding on for that for just ganking Weaver a little bit later. Weaver, of course, going to get some fairly easy free farm here. 22 and 2 at the moment, as it looks like a fair amount of peeing going on the mid lane. I think they're motioning to try and make something happen. I should mention that uh, there were several... Sm yeah, they're still holding on to the two smokes they had at the start of the game. JRX and Mint uh, Mini there. Yep. So, can have jump on in to the mid lane if they so wish, but right now just charging up the clarity, covering the bottom rune, and we'll see that spawn in just a moment there. Uh, Shadow Demon trying to put some pressure out, at least cancel out that clarity uh, with the Shadow Poison, but instead just missing and unfortunately not pick, denying out the rune either. We just see the Courier going ahead and bringing out Korkwa's uh, Gloves of Haste for his Midas, as well as Boots of Speed for the Kunkka. So that's going to be really, really powerful for them. But you also see a flank coming in. Pause, coming in from the side, doing some damage to Dexter here. And with this Nature Prophet coming on in, this is going to be very, very bad for him. He can pop off the cogs, but it won't change anything. Doesn't even get the chance to with too much stun coming forth. So good rotation. They followed up. They're looking for this Tier 1 up on the top. I mean, 3v1, cogs or no cogs, you're pretty boned there. There's <laughs> much you could do to try and get away from that. Meanwhile, though, Weaver is going to make a very good use of this open opportunity just to bust down this early tier 1 tower. I mean, it's not going to be, it's going to mess up his lane a little bit if he doesn't static farm it efficiently, but at the same time, it's going to give some much needed gold to some of the supports and going to allow them to get a little bit more active. As we see the smoke up blades, looks like they're going for a gank on that mid lane. Yeah, trying to put out pressure there. They certainly can. If they can get this done, they will connect with Concussive and everything else in the book. Trying to bring him down very, very quickly. Kunga is out of the river. Perfect perfect time for Keypad to come on in. There is a helping TP from the Sand King. We'll get, be able to get a double barrel perhaps, but too much damage has already come forth, and now he's just going to fall back to the tower. Just good movement from Qpad. Perfect time smoking. Oh, yeah, very, very nice kill. I like the fact that they immediately, like Mini immediately split off. When he saw the Sand King, immediately split from Q, uh, from Sing Sing, so he made sure they wouldn't both get stunned at the same time, and he'd have the opportunity to chase down and finish off that Kunker if necessary. It's a very smart move there, not getting grouped up and getting combos done. He saw Pass trying to figure out how to get an angle to get both of them, because he knew if he didn't stun both at the same moment, he was going to lose Kunker there and couldn't find that angle in the end, and just said, you know what, screw it, save his mana. Mm, absolutely. So, in that position, he still can do some counter gank maneuvers, but just a little bit too slow. That's just too quick of a smoke, rather. And uh, it's just meaning that the Sand King has less gank potential. Unless they already get a setup for him, he still has to level up to level 5, level 7 to actually close the distance. But, uh, fortunately, it doesn't seem like it's fully needed. They still are doing okay, despite that early smoke gank to bring down the Kunkka. Uh, in general, I think that they, they do have some good control. And, of course, they, we, Koikawa will be finding out his Midas in just a moment. He actually has the gold for it already. So, with their rune control, with the Midas coming up, mouse sports still seem in a pretty commanding uh, point in the game, even though they're not getting the ganks off or the counter initiations off. I mean, it's pretty even at the moment. Gold and experience chart, fairly even, almost like nothing in between it. That said, I am some. I, both teams have some pretty strong team fight potential, but of course, you know, as it sort of scales, I'm going to say right now, this really goes fairly late on in terms of just sheer team fight power. Having something like dual RP is a huge, huge boost. Whereas mouse sports don't have that same, same kind of team fight potential in the late game. I mean, sure, they do have the Jarak who can just add a lot of damage, as well as the Furon can sort of roll into a bit of a semi carry. But then you've got a Weaver who can be backed up by Empower, can dish out a disgusting amount of damage as well. So we'll see how that rolls out if they do end up going to late game. I see a lot of stacking going. It looks like Qpad supports are trying to get as far as they possibly can here. Yeah. So Black rushing up the Helmet Dominator, going to be looking to stack up his own Ancients very, very early on. Right now, has already the Helmet Young Will. Going to be looking for the lifesteal component on top of that. I think that's going to be fairly effective because they don't have to worry about any real hard disables other than their reverse polarity. And, uh, I mean, yes, the Clockwork can go on top of them, but then that's the time that you really want that lifesteal to be able to survive just a little bit longer. So, in general, I think it's a good move and it'll allow him to farm that much more rapidly if he can stack up the Ancients with relative ease. So, Black finds out enough gold for that Dominator and starting off stacks this early on 
is going to make it very difficult for Q-Pandas to keep up on their gold income unless they, of course, ward up the Ancients, which will nullify at least some of that advantage. Speaking of Ancients, I see a bit of ping going on there. From uh, ping going on there at the Radiant Ancients. I'm not stacked up. I'm sure what exactly Kunker is trying to get a message across to about. Maybe saying stack them for me and I'll go and kill them. And they actually might just be going for a kill here in mid. And in fact, definitely possible. This is the combo you're talking about. Can they get the. Don't. No disruption. Never mind then. I think it was the nighttime vision yeah. combined with the uphill there. Antsy just couldn't quite get within range. Yeah. Very, very unfortunate for them. The, the high ground vision, that, that's one of the few spots they didn't have the great perspective on. They do have this observer ward up top, so they might have been able to connect if they just kept on going uphill, but then he would have been safe enough under tower that the torrent would have been, wouldn't have would have secured anything, especially since he does have three points in that skewer. Speaking of, uh, there's a lot of kill potential here. Now that they've rotated the Nyx Assassin as well, although he doesn't have the Vendetta, if they can just close on it a single ability, they can change things up quite a bit. Now, it looks like Paz is trying to disjoint the ability of the Skyrock, which is just impossible. And now we're going to see Dexter close on in. Big, big use of that battery salt, but unfortunately the, the Burrow Strike will give him enough distance to survive. As will take a lot of damage here, should drop down to Skywrath Mage. In turn, Jarek's gonna die himself. The Ancients, no, Prophet will pick it off here. Sing Sing going to town, back and forth with Fata, but it's actually gonna be Fata trying to close down on Dexter. And what they're gonna do here, drop off the reverse player, get a double skewer, almost finishing up Fata and setting it up. Waga is gonna go to town here, just cleaning it up easily. Could go for more, in my opinion, since I doubt they have sentries. Yeah, here we go. On to Koikwa, gonna be able to burst him down with a couple right clicks and that shockwave doing work. Now, Sing Sing sitting, or, or sorry, Q Pad sitting at six and four. In general, I've they got to say, are in great spots. Shout to Mini, man of the mat, oh man of the moment there, playing extremely ballsy, extremely dangerous, charging back into the fight twice on almost no health to throw out two stuns that set up a whole bunch of kills there. So very good play from him there. And also should mention that right now Weaver for going boots is in fact rushing. I think what is probably to be an orchid. Yeah. He's managed to pick up that first Oblivion stuff, and yeah, he's decided, you know what, I'm fast enough on foot anyway, as it is with just my Shikuchi, and as it is, it was fast enough in those fights with just the Shikuchi, and uh, picking up several kills there. So... I believe he's even got his second Oblivion. Yeah, he's got his second Oblivion too. Yeah, so he is really, really farmed up. He's going to be able to dish out a lot of damage and also not have to worry about mana nearly as much. Uh, but my question is, how relevant is that Orchid active going to be? They already have Jarex's Ancient Seal. They can put that down on Shadow Demon and prevent any defensive disruptions. Are there any other major spellcasts that they're really worried about uh, kind of slipping through their fingers? If you can stop Kunker from throwing his boat, Torrent, uh, X marks the spot, I mean, it's always worthwhile. Even just the damage amp is always useful as well. Yeah. And why, why not? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just strong. It's always strong. I mean, you also, you can use it. I mean, Furion, again, this is another problem. Furion allows Weaver to say, well, you're not Furion if you're being a jerk and always put counter pushing whenever we push. I can go and beat the crap out of you, and I can always silence you and prevent you from trying to run. Yeah, but you can still TP scroll out of that, so it might not be the best situation. We do see a nice pickoff. Uh, Mini and Dexter go in and just find an easy solo kill with the Nyx Assassin's Vendetta. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm just. I, I definitely think Orchid's a great item on Weaver. It's a great item in the game as a whole. I just, I look at Miles' lineup and it doesn't scream, hey, we need to silence these guys. So I think the damage amplification will be great and making sure that the Sand King can't escape with Burrow and things like that will be really, really nifty. It's just, could Weaver be going for something more effective in a team fight 5v5? Well, I mean... It's going to leave him a bit of a glass cannon. I, th I feel like it's a better choice than saying going for the old-fashioned Radiance anyway. Yeah, <laughs> sure enough. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be kind of glassy, but at the same time, I mean, this fixes his mana issues, gives him a lot of damage, gives him some nice attack speed as well. I feel like it's definitely vi uh, viable, especially just being out of silence people. I mean, silences are always good at any given moment. Mm -hmm. So... We'll see. I mean, I definitely think it'll be screwing over the Shadow Demon with his disruption timing and the Sand King. If they can get it off to interrupt Epicenter, more power to them. It's just that timing window. They'll have to be very, very cautious about their positioning and making it work for them. As far as vision, what we're seeing here is that there are two wards up near the Ancients of the Radiance, and that's covering a lot of vision up in that top rune area. But the Radiant feels fairly blind just about everywhere else. They're in their own jungle. They're next to their Tier 2 up top. But as a whole, they're going out into uncontested territory. They're just kind of going out, seeing what they can find. They're going to find a stack coming on across, and they're going to have to do something about it pretty early on. They know the stack is happening in full. They actually just spawned with the dragons, and now, unless they find a kill, it's going to be difficult for them. Ats just now lost the haste rune and gets burst down in the stun anyways. So good initiation there. Vendetta strike and Sing Sing using that blink dagger early on to net an easy kill. And Shadow Demon's just having a bad time. Goes to the top lane, gets picked off by Nyx. Goes to the bottom lane, Nyx is still there. Ganking it up, roaming it up, and just playing that hero to its finest. 
Uh, not much you can do about it, really. And uh, right now, Mount Sport's going to be so careful. The fact that we can get these blink RPs off, really, really dangerous stuff. I'm just wondering if they're going to see if they can nick that ancient stack. That would be really good for them yeah. if they can manage to steal that, but we'll see. Has also has picked up some counter wards as well. In fact, it's throwing down one there to try and watch the flank there for Black or whoever's farming this bottom lane. In fact, I think they might be saying, let's go and steal that right now. Somebody might be going there to steal it right now. I think Black is actually getting ready to start using his flat cannon, flat cannon to clean that up or he's just going to stack a little bit more. Gets spotted up though by that rocket flare as well. Mm. They may need a little bit more backup though to try and stop that farm. In fact, Mini though, not ready to come, needs to go and matter up there. Yeah, at the max stack value, this is where it's most important. Of course, Kunkka can farm it with the Tidebringer a little bit, the Flat Cannon used a great effect there. But if Q Pandas can control it and prevent them from getting it and actually make it so that's kind of a bait where they go on in and then they get killed very, very quickly from some hookshot pickoffs or uh, Blink Skewers pulling them down from the cliff, that could be really, really good for Q Pandas. The problem is they don't have any static vision. They have a Rocket Flare occasionally sending on out, but I'm really surprised they're not putting more pressure on this position, especially since they must have seen the Helmet Dominator very early on. Hmm, definitely possible, but we'll see. I mean, right now I don't think they can really take that camp just yet. Probably going to take at least a couple more minutes because Garakrops are not tanky enough in my opinion. They'll take way too much damage, and I don't think they want to risk it with potentially getting smacked in my rockets, rocket flares or having someone like Magnus ready and waiting in the rings to jump them. But it looks like they are getting ready to try and put some pressure on the top line. Welcome, Mama's up there. He's actually gone for those Tranquil Boots as well. Give him a nice little boost in armor there. But it looks like Black may be in some trouble here. They could just jump him, silence him, and that's a lot of bonus damage. And look, they're lining up the, they're lining up the hook here. They're going to throw out the Rocket Flare. And in fact, he's just going to pick up Atsy. And look at that. There's just nothing he can do about it. Mm -hmm. He gets silenced, and it's just so easy for Welcome Mama to gank him. Yep. This is a perfect gank item. Want to keep the aggression rolling. Now going in. Uh, I believe for a medallion, actually. We were going to be able to, Wagamama going to be able to pick that up and just had so much physical damage. If they're orchided and they're medallioned, uh, there's just, like, no hope. This Shadow Demon is only sitting on four armor, and that's going to take a, a, every bit of that away and even put them in the negatives so that the physical damage is going to go through the roof. We do see Paws getting that little stun onto Sing Sing here, but do they have the follow-up? No, he skewers down the cliff, and if the Wrath of Nature does some work, they're just kind of forcing him back, at least for the moment, while Black, this is a distraction method, while he farms away, flat hitting down the Ancient Creeps, he's gotten so much cash just recently, jumping up to 6,300, it's all about these Ancients here that have set him up for it. Now coming on in, uh, Mini might be able to accomplish something with the Vendetta, but for right now, just buying out in the shop, now just hiding out to make sure that he's not going to be detected. Got some, uh, well... Looks like he's getting, he's trying to get the shot off there, not really going to manage it. I was also going to mention that... No, I forgot, I lost my train of thought there, I was looking at some items, oh there we go, that's right, uh, Kunku was working on some drums, as well as, what was it there, Weaver, I do definitely agree with the medallion choice, it's really going to be quite strong, especially even Kunku, I mean Kunku's got all of three armor, that's really going to allow him to blitz through his health very, very quickly. He's not going to be able to stand up to much pressure once he's getting hit by both. Like you said, the Orchid combined with the Medallion, he's not going to last very long at all. Especially if Weaver, I mean, you throw him power, and look at him, he's already hitting for well over 100 damage just with the Empower at the 15 minute mark. Really can't deal with that very easily at all. You know, Fury on top line has picked up that Shadow Blade though. Yeah, so getting the Shadow Blade is going to be really, really important for them. It forces out a lot of cash flow from the supports that they current they previously didn't have to worry about. There's a bit of a support tax when you have a Nyx Assassin on your team. But he's roaming, roaming around with the Vendetta, and he's forcing the enemy by detection. He's been forcing them to use sentries, so on and so forth. We do actually see this pick off with... Oh, actually, not going to catch him. Surprisingly, they couldn't connect with the cogs after that hookshot. Probably hit on the creeps next to him, and yeah, as a result, he, he wasn't in the cogs, so... Prophet escaping yeah, out with that Shadow Blade, but uh, uh, yeah, as I was saying, the big thing is with Weaver and Nyx, you're forcing the enemy to buy sentries, you're forcing them to buy dust or gems, and as a result, they're the ones that are deprived of that extra cash, and we're not actually seeing that go the other way around, but with this Shadow Blade now up on the Nature Prophet, it is forcing many, it is forcing Jerax to actually go and focus and make sure that they have whatever they need to lock down the uh, Furion, even if they silence him, they still won't be able to finish him if you can just invis on out. We'll see what they've got in mind here. I mean, if if we see Cupana continue to pick up a sort of a advantage on the map, they may even just invest in a gem if they can just solidify their map control there. I think it's definitely. I think that'll be worthwhile. But at the moment, actually, no. I don't think they're putting enough pressure on to really warrant the gem just yet. They're just going to stick with those wards for counter warding. In fact, you see they're even throwing some down just to counter ward. Not so much for the Furon, but actually looking for op their opponent's counter wards. Mm -hmm. Try and shut them down, prevent, or basically give Mini room to move around the map. He's got 1800 gold, looks like he's going to rush that Blink Dagger next. And I mean, once he gets that Blink Dagger, they won't even need to worry about watching for these counter wards quite so much, because he can just blink in on those targets and set up the fights that way. 
Yeah, and that can be a really, really good thing for him because then uh, he will be able to get major impales off and a quick little blink impale is enough to set up at least a two-man RP, if not more likely a three or four-man. And that kind of position really, really changes how the teamfight break, breaks down. A lot of damage up front and the gyre, uh, sorry, the weaver to back it up with huge right-click damage, it's going to be more and more devastating for Q Pandas to just jump on in and completely obliterate mouse sports in a matter of seconds. There's not going to be much response time, and that's really what they need. They are going to have hard right-click damage. Kunkka will be able to build up some crit. The Gyrocopter, of course, always has hard right-click damage. It's going to have the BKB pretty soon. But if they can get the Impale before the BKB, followed up with Magnus's Reverse Polarity, there's no real response for that because there's just too much disabled. They will be dropped in that short time frame. And we'll see what they can come up with. Clockwork actually going for an early Vanguard. I find this fairly interesting. Don't normally see that all that much. The early Vanguard there decides to go for it anyway. I guess that works. I mean, they possibly could have gone for... I mean, he possibly could have tried it for the pipe if he wanted to, I guess, because his teammates could definitely use it, especially some of the squishier ones, like the Weaver, as well as the Sky of Magic, would help them keep them up and running a lot longer against stuff like Epicenter, as well as the boat, but we'll see how this works out for him. Dexter, though... Possibly looking for an angle here with his hook. Can't quite find one though. We do have wards up on the high ground that are spotting for him. Maybe down to Sing Sing to skewer somebody back into range. Yeah, that's kind of them trying. They have so many different ways to initiate. They have so many times to find uh, ways to find the pickoff. They just need the vision. And again, I'm still kind of astounded they haven't warded up on the Ancients. That just seems like a no-brainer. But the Rocket Flare giving them enough perspective to try to go for the gank sometime. Uh, just going to be a little bit later. And in the meantime, that means that the Gyrocopter is finding quite a bit of farm. Uh, so right now, the big thing is about timing, about initiation, about movement, and uh, the one thing that really sucks for Sam King is that he's not finding that uh, movement at all. He's looking for a Blink Dagger, he's not going to get it for quite some time. He's looking at like 1200 gold, and uh, it just really, really sucks to be that far behind when you're up against a Nyx who can Blink. It pretty much means that every single Epi you bring in, you have to look at every single hero, what stun they can bring, what silences they can put up, and then try to get every single one of those on cooldown before you jump in range. Otherwise, you have to go in and try to be in the fog before you epi burrow. And it's just going to make it so that the Sand King's ultimate isn't going to be a factor in the next couple of fights unless Pause pulls out something magical. I think you may even just, he may even just burrow strike in and just try to set up a fight. Wait, set up the boat more importantly. And once the boat lands, then he might sure. go for an epicenter. I don't think he's going to try and lead with the um, epicenter burrow strike unless he can, basically, unless q Panda get baited into a really, and I mean a really, really bad fight. Exactly. So, I mean, it's just, it's beh he's behind. Mini has the blink dagger already. He can blink at his stun and the orchid, the ancient seal, the skewer, all these different things to make sure that Sand King's life is impossible as far as trying to initiate. So, I was just going to hold the back line and pretty much be a walking Burrow Strike machine, which isn't too bad. I mean, Sand King, now that he's level 9, at least has a really, really solid spell in that Burrow Strike, especially that 11 second cooldown. Allows him to keep it up and active and uh, really, really screw over Q Pandas left and right. If they go in uh, beyond their means, if they're diving towers and such, that's going to punish them quite considerably. But for right now, they're just turtling it up. They're trying to hold the line until Black finds his Black King bar, and that's not going to take too much longer, as he only really needs a recipe 900 gold away. Should also mention that um, Tanky isn't that far from his blink dagger. Either. It's just he's just finding a little bit of difficult, if a little bit of difficulty to find room to farm. And I mean, if they can get this T1 tower here, it's going to be that much closer. He can probably just snag a couple of creep camps in the enemy jungle fairly easily while he's got the pressure down here on this lane. And I think he may actually have the blink dagger faster than we expect, which is really going to open up his opportunities here to really punish Qpad. Yeah, especially they all group up like this, very easy for him to just jump in and wreck them there with an epicenter. But it is going to come down to him getting his hands on that Blink Dagger. It looks like, there we go, he's up to 1600 now. It's getting closer and closer. If they get this Tier 2 as well, I mean, if they trade Tier 2s here, that wouldn't be a terrible thing for him. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. If he can get the Blink Dagger in this stage of the game, it's going to completely affect how the next matchup is. Because as far as I can tell, there haven't been any reverse polarities this entire game, has there? I think there's been like a couple of one man reverse, but nothing to write home about. Just in, uh, just Sing Sing basically using him to set up a like a gank or two. But uh, there we go. Sing Sing actually picking up his own Black King bar. So this is going to be very hard. I mean, it'll, well, I mean, read impossible to stop his um, reverse polarities. It's not he's not going to jump in and immediately get stunned or that sort of business. So this is a pretty big deal there for Sing Sing. I mean, stuff like Shattered, if they're on the ball, if they're expecting those RPs, it's the kind of thing you can get down the disruption before it actually gets off the good RP. Yeah. So, I'm kind of confused about, about, I've been back and forth about this, but Wagamama's item build-up. He went for the Orchid, 
We had a second sage, another sage's mask. Maybe he just went for the old school orca build of building up three oblivions and accidentally picked up an one sage mask too many. But either way, he's been having a casual sage's mask, focusing on a vitality booster. I mean, that can be built into heart later, but I just I don't see anything as far as those two items right now. So is he going to go hard tank? Is he going to go for some actual right click damage? It just kind of feels like he's got a bunch of intermediary and not actually committing to anything in full. I don't think he's desperately in need of hard right click damage at the moment. I think if he wanted to go for a heart right now, it's definitely possible for him. He's got time to farm it if he wants to, just because he's not up against anything serious. And also, I mean, the heart is going to help out against stuff like the heck. Oh, like jumping on in. They will drop the Sing Sing's ultimate here. There is going to be, in turn, a Mystic Flare going on out, trying to burst down the Konga extremely quickly. They accomplish that, just that. They do bring down the Weaver back the other direction. Koga going to be able to teleport back into the fray, try to send out a boat, but for right now, Sing Sing just cleaning up, doing work, bringing down the Sand King, bringing down the Shadow Demon Black. Going to send out a missile his direction, but the next target is Jerax, trying to close in on top of him. Actually, they do pull back with the use of X-Marks to spot Mini in a bit of a rough spot. Gets an Impale onto two, though. Nice Sprout from Koikwa, preventing him from going on the high ground. Mini will be dropped down here, so they do get a little bit of a return kill, but most of them get out scot-free. They lose the Weaver very, very early in the fight because, you know, the Vitality Booster is only so much tank, and uh, but they did have to buy back on the Konga, so they lost three. They bought back on one. But uh, that was the one first major reverse polarity that we got to see. Hmm. I mean, they could set up the basically that Mystic Flare got put to work there. It just came down to basically, um, just came down to basically another hero setting it up for him. Just needed the Magnus to set up, and he was hanging back a good distance. There's no real way for Sanking to get in and counter stun, or for Shadow Demon to get in and counter disrupt that sort of stuff. So I think I think the right now the. Um, Skyrath Mage is working out for them. It's not terrible. And he's got a really nice long range slow as well that can try and help get in position if they want to. And I mean, like I said, Silence is at any point of the game. It's still pretty damn useful. Mm -hmm. And of course, you should also mention Sanking now has his Blink Dagger as well. That is probably the most scary thing for Q Panda now that he can get in there with Blink Epis and he's closing in on level, on level 2 fairly rapidly as well. Yeah. I just don't really see a way out for Q Panda right now. Miles uh, continue to accrue gold rapidly. They're topping the GPM on both the Prophet and substantially on the Gyrocopter through the use of those Ancients, which have just not been controlled at all. And uh, now Black is just carrying away, as he uh, always seems to be able to do. Helmut Dominator, BKB at 9 seconds, and Yasha possibly going for the Manta next. Either way, he's just in a, such a strong position. He is, there's very little they can do to bring him down. Actually, I mean, walking right on into a Vendetta Nyx could be the first step in that, uh, probably two-step program. There's the Clockwork Hook to be the second step. They do bring him down very, very quickly with Mystic Flare to guarantee the kill. Um, so they do actually pick up the Gyrocopter, and they show that he is very mortal, but in the midst of a full 5v5 engagement with a Blink Epicenter and with this big of a Gyrocopter, it's actually going to be really hard for Q-Pandas to pull it out, and it's only going to get worse as time goes by. I want to say this much, Dexter, Dexter needs to stop missing these hooks. I mean, he has missed so many hooks, it's not funny. Hitting allies, hitting creeps, just not basically landing those stuns. And it's kind of, I mean, at the, at the end, they still managed to pick up the Gyrocopter, but it was giving him all the more opportunity just to get that BKB up and online and turn on before they managed to finish him off. We see this, oh, well, Shadow Blade in there for Nature's Prophet. Sand King angling here for a potential epicenter, although wisely, Q-Pad managing to split up and not all bunching up to get slammed by together. And that said, though, Mini is looking for a potential gank here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see a heart rush coming out for the Weaver, actually Mini. Going to go right on top of Fata here, but there's no Clockwork follow-up just yet. They're taking their time to actually make it work. There it is. RP on two. Clockwork gets in the action, and there's the Cogs messing up. But Kunko gets to the high ground as a result of the Skewer, and he's going to be actually surviving, popping off the Torrent, popping off his boat. Paw's going to be able to walk away. The Epicenter not doing too much, but at least he survives. Now, big double impale coming out. Koiko will drop. Black going to try to do what he can with this lifesteal magic wand. He might be able to turn this around. Beautiful Burrow Strike coming across from Paws, and they just clean house. Oh my goodness, what a combo. Black and Paws just destroying everything. Epicenter just buttering them up, and Black blowing them away with an amazing flat cannon right click. Well, that's what it comes down to. And I mean, that was just it. Like, Sankey, I was a good Cogs that time. Dexter landed a really, really good Cogs, kept them split up. Unfortunately, it was pass was to have a leap over the top of that with great ease and set up that fight there for the Gyrocopter. It looks like they should be able to clean up this Roshan attempt fairly easily as well. No real potential response here from Q Panda. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot they can do about that. Yeah, one big thing is the Kunkka <clears throat> didn't die in that at all. He didn't have to buy back. He didn't just, he walked away because he got skewered up on the high ground. So that was a bit of a misplay accidentally from Q Pandas, letting Fata go. He cast out all of his spells and walked away, and then it just was on pause and black to do exactly what they did. Now they have the Aegis on the Gyrocopter, and if he wasn't big before, it's now going to be just overwhelming 
for QPad. Honestly, looking at this position, Mouse Sports, 4,000 gold ahead, 5,500 as far as experience. And looking at the net worth value, you see very far ahead, comparing 13,500 net worth compared to that of not even 10k for Waga. So he has a lot of ground to make up. He will find the heart. He will be able to survive long enough to use his time lapse, bring himself back up to full HP. But where's the damage? The swarm is only at rank one. He's actually, I think, going. Is he going stats over it, or am I just mad? Uh, Sorry, who was that? Uh, Weaver. Right now, he's got only 11 skill points. So yeah, he's going stats over swarm. He's not even getting that negative That's... armor buff, and he's just his right clicks is lackluster. Interesting choice. I guess. I guess he's decided. You know what? Um, I need a few stats. I think he's a little bit worried. No, 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 I take that back and tell. He's got a, he's got the freaking path to a heart. What is he even worried about? Maybe he just took that at sort of like the earlier levels. He took a couple of levels of stats instead of the swarm before he had his reaver. That's possible. We'll see if he actually starts leveling up um, the swarm at the next level. Yeah, exactly. I think it might have just been sort of an early game thing because he's worried about the nuke potential from cooldown um, boat as well as sand king. Yeah, there certainly is a lot of potential there. I mean, when you think about how much potential the <coughs> Shadow Demon has with disruption to set all that stuff up, a huge chain reaction, it is a very scary thing to consider, but it didn't really come into fruition here, and as a result, it seems like Waga's cautious play has possibly caught, cost them a couple kills if he could have been playing more aggressively, getting more negative armor on the opponents, burning them down more rapidly, that kind of thing. But, you know, when it's all said and done, we still have a lot of potential for the Weaver just through Sing Sing's empower to increase his right click damage substantially and therein double it over with the Gemini attack. So, really, really good potential to right click away, but all things looking towards Mouse Sports is they have the Aegis, they have the Scythe of Vice now on the Nature Prophet, and they're willing to go in for the tier 2 with no trouble at all. I'm saying another big problem here is the fact that, uh oh, it looks like they're going to pick up Atsy. There we go, good hook in! From Dex, and the gem goes down to the ground. They managed to pick off both the Shadow Demon as well as the Sand King. That takes out the Epicenter, and that is a big deal indeed. Sing Sing, though, is going to have to back off. The Gyrocop is still hitting like a truck. A buyback there on Nyx. Skyrath Mage went down fairly quickly. They're going to try and pick off. Oh, I can't get throws in the boat. We've also got the Rocket coming in there on Mini. Mini going to get clobbered there by, uh, by X marks the spot. And also, we're going to have Weaver now finally making his appearance. A teleport, and a skewer going to stop the teleport, and it looks like we will lose. Kanka, now we've got Black, going to take a lot of damage there from Weaver. There's a mana burn as well. Black trying to run away. Weaver going to try manage to run him down fairly easily. And we've also got the Orchid off cooldown in three seconds. Although that said, Black is fleeing at a very rapid pace. Of course, he does have both the Phase Boots as well as the Yasha. It looks like they're actually going to oh. back up. Hex on Mini! Oh, loses a gem again! Yeah, and now Black just turning around onto Waga. They won't be able to bring him down without actually pinning him because, of course, he does have plenty of mana left for Shikuchi. But Black just cares so little about what they're bringing his direction. Those right clicks were like pin bricks, and they just couldn't close on top of him. He's very, very quick with the Yasha phase. And on top of that, he has a decent amount of tank. Now, life stealing away, he's going to be up almost to full HP. Uh, by the end of the creep wave, just burning it down very, very quickly with the flat cannon. And they can siege on this tier 2 once more. They know the reverse polarity is down for another 30 or so seconds. And uh, this is a position to take the tier 2 very, very rapidly. Unfortunately, backdoor protection limiting their potential here. Either way, Sanking on the high ground still has that epicenter to bring to the table. And it's just waiting for an excuse to use it. Swarm comes out, but again, rank 1. Just to laying it out so that the fortification can keep things up. Swarm is actually ranked 2 now. Weaver is actually leveling up. So I guess it was just sort of an early phase thing where he was worried about... Um, you know, before he got his heart, or rather his Reaver, he was really worried about the burst potential there on Mouse's side. That said, I mean, it's very rare that we see a hero manage to basically outpace Weaver, and I think things are only going to get worse. It looks like Sing Sing's about to get picked off very easily there, because a butterfly is done on Black. Black has farmed like a madman, and look at that. I mean, if it was difficult to pin him down before, I mean, Weaver now is not anywhere close to getting a Monkey King bar. I think Black is going to be unstoppable at this point in time. Absolutely. Place. Just 100%. Just farming amazingly. That was a full butterfly on the courier, just casually coming on out. It's not Eagle Song, pick up, blah, blah, blah. Just running out to the side, secret shop. All the components, all in one has a full butterfly, and there's no Monkey King bar. That's the thing that I expected from Weaver a long time ago, but he rushed the heart, and now we're seeing it take its toll. The team fight breaks on out, though. Mystic Flare not doing enough. Jarek's getting destroyed by that boat, by the right clicks from Black. He takes a tower. He takes uh, kills. I mean, he's just doing so much. Double kill Godlike, just from the flat cannon alone, as the, the shots continue to chase on down. Clockwork was actually... Look at his death position. He was outside his own base in the mid lane, and that's where the flat cannon took its toll. Sing Sing tries to go for a nice RP, but the skewer doesn't hit on anybody as he just falls back immediately. That cooldown now pretty much in the ground there was no fear in black size there of course he has the aegis and why should he be afraid there's nothing to stop him here nothing to contest his right click potential and he's just bursting down the crease once more mini comes on in will burst hard and quite well the shockwave doing a lot on black but again he's just being earned up and still has that second life he's gonna have it for another full minute so he might as well use it here 
man mode on this tier 3, dropping it down quickly, and there's very little Q-Pack can do. Bank decides to back out finally though. He's got a good 4.8k in the bank, although it looks like Sing Sing's gonna try and take him out. Another Arcane Bolt, they're not really gonna do a whole lot. Kunker's probably getting wiped out here, not a big deal though. Drops a gem, at the very least they're gonna grab the snake that back up, but... The big deal, of course, is Black is super fun with 5.1k in the bank, and Weaver is just nowhere even close to that. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go for a Monkey King bar of his own. Already two Javelins, as you say that, he picks those up, so spends out 3,000 of that, but only 300 away from the Demon Edge, and he's going to be in a great position to seal the deal here. Oh my goodness, there Weaver. Go. Got it. Yeah, Weaver is so far behind in farm. I mean, he has the Monkey King bar and the Butterfly, whereas Weaver's just sitting on the heart and the Orchid. And the Orchid, honestly, not doing that much. It's just, he doesn't have the right-click. We've, we've got to realize that it's not so much, like, the farm levels, like, there's not that much CS in between. It's only 20-odd CS in between Weaver and Jarkov. The big difference is, I mean, the fact that Mount Black is freaking 12, 1, and 2 compared to Weaver, see on 2, 3, and 6. I mean, that's the big difference in terms of farm. And obviously, you know, a couple extra towers here and there. I mean, right now, Black can quite happily buy up mm -hmm. any items he feels like because they've still got two, all their tier 2 towers left up, so they don't even need to worry about that. As it looks like, what, what is Kanka trying to tell us? Something about BKB. I don't, not exactly sure. He's got a BKB now, I think. Okay. Yeah, there we go. He just bought his BKB. Oh, he's very proud of the BKB. <laughs> Try to keep up with Black. Oh, because style. actually his KDA is pretty atrocious. We're looking at, Black, at Black's 12, 1, and 2. Kunkka, despite being on the winning team, is sitting 0, 6, and 5. So he's very, very happy with himself to be able to farm with that 3,900 gold item. That massive luxury for the Kunkka here. <laughs> I mean, he's got a wooden leg. He's got a peg leg as well as for a hand. You've got to give it to him. He's disabled. <laughs> so there you go. Try his best. On dance. Yeah, so Fury on uh, dancing around at the enemy base, not really carrying. So it looks like the mass TP's come back. This is going to be it. This is the final fight of the, ba of the match, I think. And it's going to be either Q Pan or Hold here, or more likely Mouse drill them to bits because Black is just stupidly uh -oh. farmed. And unfortunately, they're not going to connect with the Mystic Flare. They do get the RP off entirely, a Burrow Strike and turn, but they get the damage off. They burst down the Gyrocopter. He can't do anything. Didn't have that Aegis any longer. And so he gets dropped as well as the Kunkka very, very quickly. And they're on the run. Keypad chasing them out. Amazing, amazing reverse polarity. Perfect timing. Signaling out the two heroes he perf absolutely needed to bring on down. And Koykova will fall as the final casualty. Pause. Having been able to TP back to base safely is the only one to live to tell the tale because that was a really, really good engage from Q-Panda. They are showing that they're not 100% out of this yet. They have lost their melee racks, unfortunately, in the mid. And, of course, that means they only have three in total. The one ranged and the two on bottom. But... They still can spread out. They can spread the wings a little bit with a bit of map control as they take down four very key heroes. I feel what happened was, I mean, they made a good engagement there. They picked up the heroes they needed to, but the thing was, Mouse didn't bother defending them. He said, you know what? You, um, kill <laughs> no them. disruption we'll to such. Yeah. Yeah, screw it. We're taking the racks. You can kill them. We don't really care. We've got tier twos left. We're going to be up in time before you can really do a whole lot. Do they still have the glyph up at the moment? Yeah, I mean, they still got the glyph up as well. And can Gyro, Gyro can't buy back. Whatever, Kira, no, can't buy back either. But I mean, with Epicenter, Blink Epicenter, and Kunk is still up. So I mean, they can stall for time quite easily. We've already got 12 seconds on Black. So I mean, they've got plenty of time for him to get back up and operational. See, the big problem with them in that fight was Fada didn't use that BKB. So happy about it. Didn't even click it, but obviously it was just really, really good initiation. Really good uh, reverse polarity coming on out from Sing and Sigling out those two. But yeah, they still took a Rax, and as a whole, they take a better long-term game advantage. 3,000 gold on Wagamama might be able to allow him to close the distance a little bit, but there's just so much ground to cover. The net worth is insane. Nice blink, Burrow. Attempt from pause, but just goes wide. Just a barely a little bit here. Uh, closing in, Dexter in a bit of a rough spot. They did get a little bit of vision. But as far as movement speed, the cogs, they're going to close it in, but they get the X. They, he's actually locked in place. They're going to get the torrent here, and here comes Black with that missile and a free little kill here. So bringing it down very, very quickly, Jarcopter picks up another frag and setting up himself. He's at now twenty, almost 22k net worth, and he gets that easily with an ancient swing. And uh, one thing you were comparing a little bit of the CS counts, the Weaver being only not even like 20 to 30 behind Black, it's not as much about that. And, of course, there is the big aspect of the kills, the... 13 kills certainly adds in a ton of cash, but the biggest thing is the density of those last hits. I would say a good, like, almost, like, 45 of them was Ancient Stacks. He got three full Ancient Stacks. That's quadruple stack creeps. That's a lot of Ancients to work with there. And there's so much money to behold when you can farm that freely. And they didn't ward it. They didn't control it. Black just took it away with Flak Cannon. And as a result, now he's level 21. His net worth is 22.6, and it seems like he's unstoppable, save for, like, the perfect initiation.
Say, say for the perfect initiation, nobody bothers defending him. But you know, you bring up a really good point, of course. This ancient sex gives so much money, they might actually take another crack at him here. I should mention, every time that they, um, Q Panda try and chase these guys around over here, they're losing tier 4 towers. I mean, they've already lost one. The second one's now starting to take a, quite a bit of damage. So the more fights they have over here, but it looks like we've got an initiation there. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to bring down Kunkka, and they will get Skyrath's ultimate pretty quickly as far as the cooldown, but they do need to do a lot of damage here as Black's about to come up, but a beautiful triple burrow, defensive disruption. He's ready to try to do this BKB. Lifesteal is going to be enough. Oh my Oh my gosh, he's still alive for a moment longer, but not enough to actually dead any kills. He just... Fury on, Fury out of the base. Oh, backdoor time. Oh, it's it's too late. They, they TP back, but they've lost their tier 4s. They're losing so much so quickly. Waka trying to help force out Koikova. They will succeed in that endeavor, but they're just losing so much. Like you said, the creep's just doing work there. Pots should be dropped down. Good movement from Dexter and Mini. We'll be able to get a little pick off, but here's Black. Coming back on, he used that buyback, and there's that right click we were looking for. Took a while. He's been locked down for quite some time, but finally gets to actually show what he's worth there. Amazing, amazing right-click potential there. Uh, adding up, we're seeing a very, very large amount of right-click. I think th close to 350 average auto-attack damage. It just racks up so quickly, and there's not much more that Q-Panda can do. They are going to be afraid for their lives, just trying to use every reverse polarity to its fullest. But with this next Aegis, if Blacks picks it up, and indeed he sh should in just a moment, there's, I mean, I, I don't know. His, as far as inventory slots, he'd have to sell, like, the Yasha or something. But That's the Yasha. You can just drop that down. I mean, he could even sell phase boots if he wanted to. I mean, all he has to do, he doesn't need to chase me back. He's just going to waltz, waltz into that base and activate flat cannon and, and win. Yeah. Uh, it means that there's still, because he doesn't have the Aegis, there is still some hope for Q-Pad. If they do more of that reverse player initiation, not letting him get any auto attacks off is pretty much the name of the game. They don't have any halberds or other ways to prevent his auto attack, so it's literally just commit the reverse player to the skewer and any follow-up stuns they can to prevent him. But as a whole, honestly, Fod has all game long been casting out spells that don't mean anything. It's kind of been weird to watch those animations, that little hook hand go back and forth. But uh, yeah, the big thing here is Black, if he gets disabled. If he gets the right clicks off, game over. Plain and simple. If he gets a full flat cannon off, there's nothing that Q-Panda can do. But they've been doing very, very well thus far in keeping things up and keeping the damage out that they pick him off quickly and less Shadow Demon's quick on his fingers, they might actually be able to get another pick because he doesn't have Aegis that is on the profit. Understandable, he doesn't want to drop out any of his items, but still, Black is in a vulnerable state if they do find a pick off here. I don't know. I say I think they're not. I think they're feeling pretty confident here. Pass is carrying two, two uh, gem of true sides because you know why stop at half the bling when you can carry two. So here the cogs come out there from Dexter. Dexter actually in a slightly bad position. They get the tower though, and it looks like they'll be jumping in in just a moment. Black. There we go, just activate, no, not activating flat cannon yet, he actually finished off a full sand and Yasha once again. And he's just gonna sit there and tank shots, not really care a whole lot, there we go, jump in there from Dexter, can he set up a cogs? It's only gone the Shadow Demon though, it's not really of any great value, the boat comes in, gonna land and they're not really hit anything at all, the gem is down on the ground, it's like they're throwing a gem down on the ground right now. As yeah. it looks like they are just gonna charge in now, and I think Black is getting ready to click flat cannon and win. Yeah, he already actually used it on the racks there, got two kills just by, you know, being there, hitting racks. And he's like, okay, well I'm bringing down buildings, but I happen to be incidentally killing off everybody else in turn. Now going on Sing Sing, he will pop off that reverse polarity, but just gonna keep himself alive and uh that's pretty much it. <laughs> no nobody's even saying anything. It's just silently murdering everybody here while the ancient falls. So that's gonna be it. Ats helping to click that on down and the win goes in favor of Mouse. So taking the third place position and uh, getting the point value for that here in the TPL Season 5 Demon Edge Cup. That is going to be our conclusion for the evening. This awesome game, this awesome series uh, has come to an end. A lot of great games, back to back to back. So many consecutive awesome Dota matches. But in the end, we do see Mouse take it away here. Q-Pad does unfortunately take fourth place. But still, getting something out of it. They're going to be able to move on forward with their heads held high for next uh, cup. Trying to make sure that they can rack up even further points and get a shot at the playoffs later on in the future. I just want to say the kill board looks fairly even, deceptively even. Yeah. We've got 10 and 2 and 9 for, uh, for Sing Sing. you got Fat City on uh, 0 and 9, 1 and 9 for poor old Shadow Demon, but unfortunately 17 and 3 yeah. for Garakot and for Black, just completely destroying everything in his path. There was no stopping him at all. Yep, that's it. So, yeah, this was really, really good series. I really loved these games today. It was awesome to be able to cast this up with me, man. We actually haven't had too much opportunities to cast uh, prior to this, so maybe a, 
a few games here and there, but uh, overall, this was our first major opportunity to be able to try out this combo, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. You can always give us some feedback and uh, tweet it at us or PM the Twitch account for the Premier League, and we'll get to that and check it out and try to improve as best we can over the course of the season. But so far, so good. Some awesome Dota. Very, very long day. I'm going to go grab some dinner myself, but uh, really, really fun to be able to cast this up with you, man, and some awesome Dota. Yes, thanks. It was good indeed. I'm looking forward to next Monday. Of course, the next match, I'm pretty sure, is happening on Monday the 27th, if I remember correctly. I was thinking it was a Sunday, but we can double-check that and make sure that the viewers know exactly when we're jumping on into it, because that's going to be... Uh, I mean, all these cups are designed to be giving you guys... Because oh. of the elimination format, everybody gets the, the best possible when I games. Monday... It's my Monday morning. Oh, fair enough. But it's EU Sunday evening. So, yeah. It's, in, it's oh, EU Sunday Sunday afternoon. Yes. Yeah. That's my bad. So, our next cup is going to be the Reaver Cup. Looking at 14 o'clock CEST. That's Central European Summertime. And that's going to be on the 6th uh, for the Europe, anyways. And so, that is going to be uh, Monday, Sunday for us and Monday for U Triumph over in Australia. And. Uh, that's going to be an awesome opportunity to get some more action. I think Alliance will be participating in that one actively, so give them a chance to a ch uh, chance to make up for lost time. They are doing G1 stuff right now. That's why they forfeited to Q Pandas early on. But uh, still, they do get to participate in the subsequent Cups, and we're going to get some awesome Dota out of them. They are one of the awesomest teams to watch for dynamic strategies and just some amazing Dota. So, anyways, uh, that's it for me. Do you have any other clothing thoughts on the, not only this match, but the day as a whole? I think Alliance need the handicap. I think it needs to be done, so <laughs> dear god, they are fearsome. Sure enough, man. Well, can't wait to see it, but for right now, thank you guys so much for tuning on into the Premier League Season 5. A lot of awesome games. We'll have the VODs up uh, sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon is probably the estimated time for that, and that's going to be all the awesome games today. But in conclusion, the final standings is that Evil Geniuses takes away first place, Virtus Pro second place. The third place will go to Mouse Sports here with this game victory, and Q Pandas sets themselves up for fourth. So... As a whole, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really, really enjoyable Dota to cast, and that's going to be it for us. Blaze and Triumph, signing off. Bye, guys.